title of Unit 8 is Diagonal Forces. In this unit, we're going to explore situations where we have a force that acts at an angle to our coordinate system. In Section 8.1, I'm going to discuss how to draw free body diagrams for this type of situation and how to find the components of the forces that act at angles to our coordinate system. Forces of vector quantity. Vector quantities have direction as well as magnitude. And you should recall that vector quantities also include things like displacement, velocity, and acceleration. When we have a vector quantity that makes an angle with our coordinate system so that it doesn't, uh, doesn't line up in the X or in the Y direction, then it's going to be necessary to separate that or resolve that vector into its components. The components tell you how much the vector points in any given direction. So in this, uh, in this case where we have uh, this guy pushing down and forward at an angle of 21 degrees with the X axis, part of that force pushes forward and part of that force pushes downwards and we refer to these parts of the vector as the vector's components we refer to the horizontal part as uh, the x component to the force and the vertical part is the y component to the force on this slide, I'm going to show you some shortcuts to working out the, uh, the components of a vector if we know its direction and magnitude. You should recall that uh, we can draw the vector along with its components in a right triangle. The X and Y components are always going to be perpendicular to each other because they fall in the X and Y directions, which are perpendicular. And we're able to always use right triangle trig to work out the uh, components given the magnitude and the direction. Most of the time we're going to see problems involving an angle made with the X axis. And in that case, we can use these shortcuts. Nine out of 10 problems are gonna involve the angle being made with the x-axis. Occasionally, we will see problems involving the angle with the y-axis. And in that case, uh, what we're going to do is trade the sine and cosine. Okay, so uh, you can use the shortcuts over here if the angle given is made with the x-axis, and we can use the uh, the, the shortcuts over here if the angle is made with the y-axis. And I went ahead and put these, uh, these shortcut equations on your equation sheet. When we have a problem involving a, uh, involving a situation where we have a force acting at an angle, here's how we want to go about analyzing it. We're going to start out just as normal, drawing a free body diagram and uh, representing the forces as arrows. Any forces that are acting at an angle to the axis are going to have to get resolved into components. And what you're going to see me do is draw the force in as a solid arrow, and then I'm going to draw the components of that force as dotted line arrows. Something else to keep in mind, the situation is going to uh, dictate how you are going to analyze the, 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 the problem. If the object is at rest or if it moves with constant velocity, we need to remember that the acceleration of the object is zero and therefore the net force is zero and the forces in every direction are balanced. If the object is accelerating, you may be asked to calculate the rate of acceleration, but you need to understand that uh, in, a, in a situation where the object is accelerating, the forces have to be unbalanced. There has to be an unbalanced force in at least one direction. Most problems you're going to see are going to feature a balanced force in one direction and then an unbalanced force in another direction. Good example of that is an object accelerating across a floor. In this case, the up and down forces are balanced because there is no acceleration 
and no motion vertically. And so the up and down vertical forces have to be balanced, but the horizontal side to side forces are unbalanced to provide the uh, horizontal acceleration. In this example, we have a 50 kilogram acrobat hanging at rest from, a, from two ropes uh, as shown in the diagram. And we need to find the tension in each rope. We're going to start out by drawing a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the acrobat. We have the weight force acting down. We have the tension in rope 1 that I'll label as T1 and the tension in rope 2 that I'll label as T2. Now because T2 acts at an angle, we're going to need to separate it into its components. T2X and T2Y. T2 is still there. These two components are the two parts of T2. And it's important that we remember since the acrobat is at rest, we automatically know that the forces acting on her are balanced. So we're going to be able to find T2Y by calculating the weight. The total force up, which is T2Y, has to equal the total force down, the weight. And we know how to calculate weight. It's just M times G. So we can plug in the mass, which is given as 50 kilograms, times G. We're using a value of 10. And we can calculate T2Y as being 500 newtons. And we're going to use that along with the angle to find the tension in cable 2. I'm going to redraw the, uh, the tension in cable 2 along with its components, and then I can rearrange those into a free body, uh, into a right triangle. We know that T2Y is 500. We know that the angle with the X is 67 degrees, and so we can use a trig function to relate the opposite side to this angle and the hypotenuse of the triangle. Or, as I'm going to do here, we can use one of our shortcuts. T2y, the y component, is going to be the magnitude of the tension in cable 2 times the sine of the angle with the x. That's one of the shortcuts that I left you uh, several slides ago. I know T2y is 500. I know the angle is 67, and so now I can just use algebra to solve for T2. T2 is going to be 500 divided by the sine of 67 degrees. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll find that T2 is going to be 543 newtons. So we found the tension in cable two. To find the tension in cable one, well, we need to look at the forces in the x direction. We know that the forces in both directions are balanced because the acrobat is at rest. So T1, the total force acting to the left, is going to equal T2x, the total force acting to the right. And uh, again, we can use one of the shortcuts. Or you could use right triangle trig to relate the, uh, the, the um, adjacent side to the angle and the hypotenuse, which we now know. Or you can use tangent to relate the angle and the opposite and adjacent sides. So the shortcut for the x component is to take the magnitude and multiply it by the cosine of the angle with the x axis. That's supposed to be T1 there. So T2 we found uh, previously as 543 newtons. We can multiply that by the cosine of the angle with the X, which was given as 67 degrees. And this will work out to be 212 newtons. And so we found the, uh, the, the tension in both ropes and completed the problem. Okay, and now we're going to have another similar example. Here we have a 60 kilogram climber hanging from a rope as shown against a frictionless wall. And we need to find the tension in the rope and the force that the wall exerts on the climber. Again, we're going to start by drawing a free body diagram showing the forces acting on the climber. We'll have the weight force that acts down. 
The normal force, this is exerted by the wall on the climber. Remember, normal means perpendicular, and normal forces are always perpendicular to the surface of contact. Here we have a vertical surface of contact, so we will have a horizontal normal force. And then we're going to have the tension in the rope acting along the rope. And because that tension acts at an angle to our coordinate system, we're going to need to separate it into components that look like that. And just as we had in the last example, since we have uh, our, our climber that is at rest, the forces on the climber have to be balanced. And so we know the Y component to the tension has to equal the weight of the climber. We know how to calculate weight. It's mass times G. The mass is given as 60 kilograms. G is a value of 10, and so we know the Y component of the tension is going to be 600 newtons. We can use that along with the angle that's given to find the tension in the rope. I'm going to draw the tension along with its components, and I can rearrange those into a right triangle. I know tension in the Y is 600. I was given the angle with the Y direction. And so we know the adjacent side to this angle. We're looking for the hypotenuse. Cosine is the trig function that relates the adjacent and the hypotenuse of a triangle. So the cosine of that angle is going to be the opposite side which is Ty, which is 600, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the tension, what we're looking for. We can algebraically rearrange this to solve for the tension. And when we plug those numbers into a calculator, we'll find that the tension is going to be 609 newtons. In order to find the normal force, we have to look at the forces in the x direction. So in the x direction, the forces have to be balanced because the climber is at rest. And to find the x component to the tension, well, the x component is opposite, is opposite this 10 degree angle. We know the adjacent side is 600, and so we can work out the x component uh, to the tension by using tangent. The tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite side, which is the x component, what we need to find, divided by the adjacent side, which is 600. If you plug those into your calculator, you'll find that the X component to the tension works out to be 106 newtons. And keeping in mind that the tension in the X is equal to the normal force, what we're looking for, that means the normal force is also going to be 106 newtons.